getting signed, almost quitting music, and how God restored it all. Today, we got Ty Brasso. Don't you go anywhere. Hey yo, what's going on? It's your man Ruslan with KingStreamENT.com. This channel exists to encourage, empower, inspire you to live out God's dream for your life. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a thing. And of course, I got to send a big shout out to all the Patreon. Patreon is a way you can monthly support this channel and everything we're doing here at KingStream. Keep the lights on, keep fly interviews coming, all that good stuff. And here's the deal. The people on Patreon get the full interview first while you guys get them broken up. So if you want to see the full interview, consider hopping on Patreon. But without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I got the man, the myth, the legend, Young T, Uncle T, Mr. Ty Brazzle. How you feeling? What up, my man? What's going on? Chilling, man. You and Cali. I'm in Cali. You're in the studio. In the studio. In the studio. That means we friends in real life. <laughs> yes, sir. We just finished having some uh, some eggs, some kale. Um, um, some um, blueberries. Some, some blueberries. You didn't like the sweet potatoes. I'm not a, a sweet potato guy, you know, but uh, everything else was grand. <laughs> how was how was the cooking? Tell me how the cooking was. Uh, yeah, on a scale of about one to ten, I would have to say it was about a, you know, like a six. That I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was good. It was real good. Um, it was real good. Yo, uh, I'm, ha I'm happy you're here, man. I'm happy we're in person. Or you're in the studio. This isn't like an event. You know what I'm saying? Like you really pulled up and I appreciate yeah. you coming through. Absolutely. Um, to do the interview. So for the people who don't know who Ty Brazel is, um, just just tell, tell us who you are, where you from, how you getting to doing music. Yeah. So, um, well, my name is Ty Brazel. Uh, AKA is that him? Um, no. <laughs> I like that. Um, but but yeah, like basically, you know, like I grew up around music. Like my family, mm -hmm. just like uh, where I grew up, everything was like centered around music. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Right. I grew up uh, in Olive Branch, Mississippi, right. right where it touches Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. So we call it Mississippi. It's That's like dope. right where they touch. I like that. Yeah, it's a real down south stuff, you know. Um, and so growing up, you know, like just I was always around music everywhere. Mm -hmm. I saw it everywhere. And so I just really was into it. And so when I was in high school, that's when I started like freestyling, mm -hmm. you know, and just like kind of having fun. And, uh, and then I realized like, dang, I kind of enjoy this. I'm kind of good at it. Mm -hmm. Like, and then when I went to college, my freshman year, that's when I started rapping. I started a group with uh, my friend. We was called the Comfortable Kids. Okay, that's kind of fly. Comfortable yeah. Kids. Yep. And so, can we still uh, look any of that stuff up online? You know what I'm saying? Uh, po quite possibly. <laughs> if you do enough research. Um, and so, so yeah. So we did that for about a year and a half. Okay. And uh, I ended up leaving school to pursue a solo music career. And so, uh, yeah, the rest is history. That's what's up, man. I uh, I think me and you first connected right around the time you was in college early. Yeah. Um, and then we ended up hanging out in person. I remember me, you, young Noah at Flavor Fest. Was it 2015? 2015. 2015. Yeah, uh, yeah man. I, I've I've been inspired, I think, by your by your glow up. Um, you you was indie for a minute. You was, you put I feel like you put in a lot of work. Like yeah. you've been consistently at this for a number of years yeah and then it seems like recently within the last what three years two years you got with four against five joseph p dirty rice uh signed over there and then like everything really blossomed yeah. you know what i'm saying and the stuff that like we all kind of knew behind the scenes are like yo ty's dope he got crazy melodies he's a super cool guy i feel like more of the public got a glimpse into yeah what's that process been like to signing to a label four against five uh under curb records which is a you know pretty big label like what's that been like for you yeah i mean uh you know i was independent from 2014 to 2017 so i did like uh and before that was after uh i started doing christian music so so i put in about three and a half four years um independent just independent grinding on your own yeah so, you know, it was, I think everything has its challenges. Uh, independent was a fun time, but also a very challenging time because it's like, you know, it's like you always, just like all the money you make, you're putting it right back in. Right. You're reinvesting. So a lot of times you're going to be, you know, broke 
you know, mm -hmm. and so you might be down and out, but you know, you got to keep pushing. Mm -hmm. And so that was a tough season. And, and, but, you know, I put in the work and, you know, and God opened some doors. I got connected with four against five with Joseph and them. And um, yeah, like, you know, connecting with them, it was a blessing. It's been great. And so I'm excited, you know, about what God is doing there. And uh, it's made life a lot easier for me in, in some aspects. And uh, so, yeah, it's, I've appreciated it. I think the interesting part is um, you you were connecting with the label, right? Because people always think like, yeah, I'm going to drop a joint on SoundCloud mm. and then I'm going to blow up and get signed. Yeah. And then I'm on tour in front of thousands, right? right? I appreciate that your story was you started the relationship with them and then y'all yeah, were about to sign. You're talking about signing. And then... It kind of kind of simmered down a little bit, and then you dropped the indie record, yeah. which seems like that's what solidified like finally getting over there. Yeah, what was that process like? Because I'm sure mentally it had to be tough to you're like right there, you're trying to get this deal, work with you know. I, I feel like Joseph is a pretty iconic dude in our space. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, what was that like getting there, and then having to like, all right, I'm going back to the drawing board, and I'm I'm gonna keep grinding. Like, what was that like? Yeah, so you know, just like man. So connecting with Joseph, like, it was crazy how that happened. We actually met in 2015. So it was just, like, crazy story. Like, it was a it was a guy that was um, doing his yard work. And mm -hmm. Joseph, you know, he was trying to, like, evangelize to him. So he was like, hey, y'all, y'all want to check out some Christian rap? Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> he showed it to him. They was like... They was like, man, I don't like this, but, hey, you need to check out Ty Brazel. Really? Know? Yeah, so it was like... Um, and so... So he went and looked me up then, 2015, connected with me. We started, like, chopping it up, like, growing together. Yeah. We read through a book. Uh, we started reading through The Mortification of Sin. Is that the name? Really? Of the I've never heard of that book. That's some I deep think, theology yeah, book right I'm there. Like, G uh, Joseph came in, you know, like, uh, trying to, like, really help me grow as a as a believer, as a person. That's beautiful. Uh, before the music, you know what I mean? Right. And so I always respected him on a different level for that. And so, so yeah, we grew our, our relationship and we got real close to like finishing things up and signing at the end of 2016. Mm -hmm. And then we just couldn't really get the contract to a point where both parties were satisfied well me and so well, oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> I love the fact that you was negotiating right because that that means that you had a degree of um I guess to some degree a, de a level of confidence in yourself yeah a level of leverage you know and you knew that this is the homie he's mentored me he's he's disciple he's the disciple we're going through books together but I'm not just going to jump out the window and sign any old thing that y'all put in front of me yeah. you know what I'm saying so like kudos to you for that and having the patience and the foresight to do that that's super fly so you're going back so y'all going back and forth and really you are just trying to become more comfortable with the terms yeah absolutely I mean you know what I mean like at the end of the day, like, I, I, I felt that I was trying to be wise about where my market value was at at the time and so that I wouldn't be trying to overdo it, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time still get what I felt like I could bring to the table. Right, right. And so, um, so, yeah, I was just like, all right, well, at the moment, like, it's just not really working out. So I just kind of like just went back to being indie mm -hmm. and I ended up dropping the Young T album mm -hmm. uh, in June 2017. Mm -hmm. And it did it did good and it got, uh, you know, well received. Yep. And so we ended up reconnecting after that album. And then I ended up signing at the end of 2017. What was that entire process? You said 20. What year did y'all first hook up? Fifth, the... 2015. And you didn't sign the paperwork till 2017. Yeah, to the end of 2017. Two year process. But yeah, about two and a half. That, that I'm, 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 there's people watching this that need to know that it's not an overnight thing. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? That 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 even in a situation where you have a relationship with somebody at a label and it's dope, it's still not an overnight thing. Hey, you know, one of my favorite quotes out there, you know, is that it, it you know, uh, it takes years and years to become an overnight success that's dope saying? that's a good quote so you get signed to uh to four against five um and you had already had the young t record out that's bubbling that's just organically making noise yeah and then what what, what came next like what was what was that process like of like okay cool now you on a you on a pretty big label what, what what's happening now so like right around that time is when i connected with kb um mm -hmm. so like 
So actually, like KB found out about me from the record that I put out previously before Young T, which was called 1994 Until. It was an EP mm -hmm. I put out. That joint um, was hard, by the way. You had, I feel like you had some boom bap hip hop stuff on there that thanks, was like man. cold. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, so so he found out about me then. We connected. And then so at the end of 2017, right, right before I signed is when he asked, or like right around the time that I was signing, he asked me, to go on the tour with him and Trip Lee, mm -hmm. the uh, the home team tour. And, you know, so that was exciting, you know. Um, that was a pretty big tour, I feel like. That was a pretty big mo monumental moment for you. Yeah, that was, you know, uh, that was real big. That was fun. You know, it was exciting to be around those guys, not just for the exposure and the music opportunity, but those guys are wise, you know, the mm -hmm. way that they think. Mm -hmm. It's just on a different level, you know, and they're always considering you know, not just the music side of things, but they're always considering, you know, what, what God thinks or what he says about something. And, you know, mm -hmm. so being able to look through those lenses, like, and just learn from guys like that, you know, that was, that was monumental for me, you know, whoop de whoop you know, so that was, that yeah, was, whoop that was, you know, <laughs> ah, ah, like ah, 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 whoop -whoop. <laughs> you know, that was exciting. Yeah, that was, that was, that was fun, man. That was a, that was my first time like touring with like a tour bus. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. So that was like real great experience for me. And, you know, it starts to open up more doors. But that also set the stage because right after I came off of that tour, I dropped my first single with the label. OK. Praying Hands, yeah. uh, which has been like my most successful, uh, commercially successful yeah. song to yeah. date. Um, and so, yeah, like, you know, so you come out guns blazing. You sign, you hop on a tour with KB. Right. Boom, you drop one of the most commercially successful joints you did out the gate. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was like, it was just like, because of all the groundwork and the foundation that was laid the previous few years, you know, just from like, because I also, you know, I did a tour with Thizzle and Jay Givens and Jay Monty. Yeah, I remember that uh, tour. Five, that was dope. Uh, the, the previous year. But before that, I did like a small tour with me and Aaron Cole. Uh -huh. You know, I dropped Cloud Nine Rise 1994 until Young T. So I dropped three projects. I did three tours. Uh, I did a lot of like one off shows, mm -hmm. like just try like consistently land the groundwork, mm -hmm. you know, step by step. And so uh, to some people may look like it just kind of happened, but it was like it's all about, you know, just the result of the groundwork and being able to get yourself to a bigger launching pad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like like growing subscribership on all the different platforms, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Grow growing the, the fan base that's with you from your consistency, you know, from following you. And so. So, yeah, like being at that point, it was because of like the launch pad and the foundation right. that was created. Right. And I feel like you you mentioned some earlier, like in terms of just the practical side of having put out three records while you were indie. Uh, that's now that you're on a major and you have more visibility, people were discovering that old music, which is still keeping revenue coming into your pocket. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think people underestimate the value of putting out independent music, owning it and still having that revenue trickle in every month. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I so I put out three projects and the only, so the first project was a mixtape, mm -hmm. uh, Cloud Nine Rap. So I I don't receive any revenue from that one. And then I put two projects out after that one, EP 1994 Until, and then an album, Young T, mm -hmm. um, which I put that out uh, independently uh, and I get all the, the revenue from that. But the one that I put out right before that, 1994 Until, mm -hmm. it was a complicated situation. And I've never received a penny from that uh, EP Oof, okay. because of the uh, management situation that I was in. Um, Ouch. So yeah. go, go, go go stream the other one. Y'all go stream the other hey, one. <laughs> you know, stream it all. All I'm saying is, you know what I'm saying, just, uh, you know, like, just be wise about the way that you operate because, you know, yeah. Yeah.